All right. Good evening, everybody. Y'all glad to be here tonight? Amen. My name is Minister Anthony Christian. I serve as the Director of Worship here at Bates Memorial, and I just want to take this time on behalf of our pastor, the Reverend Dr. F. Bruce Williams, our First Lady, Dr. Michelle Williams, and the entire Bates Memorial family to welcome you to Bates Memorial. We're so glad that you chose Bates, and we're so glad to host you on tonight. I'm going to invite you to stand to your feet. We're just going to sing a song of praise to open the night. And we ask that you would join in with us if this is a familiar song with you. Amen? Amen? Come on, talk back to me. <laughs> it's all right to put your hands together. The song goes like this. Lord, you are good and your mercy enduring forever. Lord, you are good. Say, Lord, you are good. Say, Lord, you are good. Say, people from every nation and tongue, from generation. Come on, let's put it together. Here we go. Lord, you are good and your mercy enduring forever. Come on, one more time. Say, Lord, you are good. People from every nation and tongue, from generation. together just like that. So good, so good, so good. Say yes you are. Yes you are, yes you are, yes you are. Say you are.
Come on, let's give another hand clap. <laughs> Truly, we thank you, all of you for being here tonight and we welcome you while you are here. My job is to introduce the mayor, but before I would like to say thank you, Dr. Bruce Williams for allowing us to come back again for another year, we appreciate that. And now I'm gonna introduce the summit present to others, our great mayor of this city, Mayor Craig Greenberg. Come on, Mayor. Come on, come on now, y'all give him, come on, give him a God bless you. Thank you so much, Superintendent Horton, and what an amazing way to kick off this evening. Thank you so much to the wonderful choir, the Reverend Dr. Bruce Williams. Thank you for hosting us to you and your entire Bates Memorial family. Thank you so much for hosting us again for this very special evening. Thanks to Paul Callanan and our entire Office of Safe and Healthy Neighborhoods team for sponsoring this event and for the work that you and your colleagues at Ocean do every day of the year working to prevent violent crime from happening in our city. And thanks to everyone for joining us here tonight. This Night of Remembrance is an unfortunate event, but an important event that we have each year. You know, I wish I was starting off with New Year's greetings, but unfortunately, we're gathered here tonight for New Year's sorrow. And I am so sorry. I am so sorry to each of you who are here tonight because you lost someone who you cared about last year or in a previous year. The people whose names we'll read tonight, they mattered. They mattered to their family. They mattered to their community. They mattered to our city. And to the families, I want you all to know that your loss is our loss. And it's especially painful because of the tragic way in which we, in which we lost each of the people who we're remembering this evening. Put simply, we lose far too many people in our city to gun violence. Far, far too many. I'm a survivor of gun violence myself. It was only a mo moment of good fortune that my name was not read aloud at this event last year. A moment of good fortune that I will never forget. A moment of good fortune that inspires me to continue to make preventing gun violence the number one priority of my mayoral administration of our entire city. And tonight, the name of one of my close friends will be read aloud because he was a victim of gun violence last year in the old National Bank shooting. No one in our city is immune from gun violence. It's everyone's problem, everyone's challenge. But it doesn't have to be this way. I was thinking about this just last night. Last night, I returned from a wonderful family vacation celebrating the new year and the holidays with my family in Japan. Japan is a country of about 125 million people. And Japan, for their entire country, generally loses fewer than 10 people each year 
to, ten, to gun violence. Fewer than 10 people in the entire country of 125 million people. And I get home and I land, the plan lands, lands, and I turn my phone off from airplane mode into regular mode. And the very first news story that pops up on my phone is about another tragic school shooting, this time in Iowa. So it just brings it all home that here in our city, we lost 150 people to homicides last year, most of which were from gun violence. That's unacceptable. We can and we have to do better. Yes, that is definitely worthy of applause. We may not ever get to where Japan is, but we can do better. We can have a safer America. We can and we must have a safer Louisville. And as your mayor, I promise that we are and will continue to be deeply committed to supporting survivors of violence and their families and to preventing more of these tragedies through the work of OCEAN, through the work of LMPD, Chief, Chief Gwyn Villaruel and some of her colleagues are here with us tonight. Thank you all for attending. <laughs> through the work of other agencies in Metro government, partners in our community like Bates Memorial Church, through advocacy to the state legislature, through advocacy to our judicial branch, and other work. And I know that none of this work will ease the pain of grieving parents, grieving spouses, grieving friends. But please know to each of you who are grieving with us here tonight that work is happening. The number of people lost to homicide in our cities has gone down over the last two years. The number of shootings happening in our cities has also gone down over the last two years. But let me be clear, it is not going down fast enough. We are still losing far too many people to gun violence. And so as a city, we have to do more, and we will. But we all need to know there's a lot to be done. So we need the help of everyone in this room and many more rooms like this to do this work together. Right now, the chief and I were just talking about this today. LMPD is doing a better job at solving fatal and non-fatal shootings. So families like yours can have some closure and some justice. But there is a lot more work to be done. We will continue to do that work and we need the community's help to continue to do that work. We will also keep creating opportunities so that more young people Avoid the paths that far too often lead to tragedy. And at the same time, for the individual people who have made the tragic choice to take lives and endanger others through gun violence, we must hold them more accountable to prevent others from creating more tragedies and adding more lists to the ones that we're about to read here tonight. This is all part of what we have to do to reduce the amount of gun violence in our city. And we need your help to do this. We also have to continue to provide more access to resources like trauma care to people who are coping with the impacts of gun violence. And we will continue to fight for changes in our state's gun laws at the state and federal level so that we can do a better job of keeping our neighborhoods safe. We all deserve this. We all deserve to be safe in our homes, in our streets, in our schools, in our workplaces, in our houses of worship, at our banks. Everywhere we go in our city and our country should be safe and free from gun violence and so we must continue to do this work together. So I'm here tonight to tell you that we will keep fighting we will keep fighting to do whatever it takes for as long as it takes. 
And that fighting, that advocacy, is one of the ways that we honor those who we've lost to gun violence by working to prevent that violence from happening in the future. And I know many of you are already doing this important work. Folks like our good friends at Moms Demand Action, thank you for everything that you all do. And thanks to everyone else, yes. And thanks to everyone else who is doing similar good work across the city. And to those who are here tonight morning and have not been involved in advocacy, I encourage you to join us. Join us in making our city safer, stronger, and healthier. I know that this work will not bring back your loved one, but hopefully through this work, we can prevent other families from experiencing the pain and grief that each of you are feeling, that each of you are dealing with. So that over time, the group of families who are gathering for this night of remembrance shrinks, and that we have the opportunity to have more and more nights of celebration, where we can celebrate love in our city, where we can celebrate support where we can celebrate progress made to end this public health epidemic of gun violence that is plaguing our city. So thank you all for joining us here tonight. My condolences to those who have lost loved ones over the past year or years in past, but please know that we will continue working in their memory and may the memory of each loved one who you have lost continue to be a blessing. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Mayor. We thank you for that. Now what we're going, getting ready to do is we're going to introduce the counter holders as we go back and the mayor will come and read the names. Representatives from Moms Demand Action members of the Metro Council Youth Cabinet, members of the California Neighborhood Youth Board, Ocean Violent Prevention Ambassadors. Reginald Spate. Dorian Tisby. Deonta Cross, Sr. Sherry Allen. Jeremiah Buckner. Paul Turner. Mitchell Eddings. Paulette Ray. Timothy Greer, David Boyd Jr., Caleb Pace, David Sloan, Javarius Hendricks, Marcus Cambrin, Benicia Sims, Kenneth Mayer, Andrew Valdez. Monte Robinson. Mark Lucas. Zashe Imani Te Tawa. Christopher Adams. J. 
John Taylor Jr. Alonzo Palmer IV. Sapphire Atiye. Natasha Turner. Dariante Coleman. Carlos Victoria Valdez. Jennifer McDermott. Terrence Montgomery. And Tavius Roberts. George Sled. Haley Meters. Eric King Jr. Sharonda Harrison Adams. Good evening. I'm uh, Pastor Williams, I pastor here at Base Memorial Baptist Church, and I just wanted to, first of all, let you know how honored we are to host this moment. One of the greatest gifts that God has given us is the gift of the mind. And part of that gift is the gift of memory, to be able to take slices and slivers and parts and pieces of memory and remember them, put them back together of portraits of days gone by. Someone has said that memory is to the mind what an addict is to an old house. In old houses, there were huge addicts and it was in the attic that we would store items and trinkets and photo albums so that we could every now and then climb up in the attic and relive days gone by. So the gift of memory is our capacity whenever we choose to climb up in the attic of our mind and rummage through memories of days gone by. Tonight we're here to remember here to remember those who have been taken by violence and we're here to gather collectively to support one another to grieve and to encourage one another that we will do all that we can to make sure that this does not continue and it is so fitting that all of us with so many diverse backgrounds would all collectively come together because the truth is that no one person or group can address this issue of violence alone. It takes all of us. Sometimes it feels like we're separated, but the truth is that we are all connected. We're all together. As John Donne says, no man is an island, every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main Dr. King, when he was speaking about the interrelated structure of reality, says that we are all caught in an inescapable web of mutuality and tied in a single garment of destiny. What affects one affects the other. And so your pain is mine and my pain is yours. And so we're here to remember. And those who have we have lost because of violence will live on as long as they live on in our hearts and in our memories. We remember them because they're worth remembering and we remember them so that they can serve as a source of inspiration, motivation and fuel to make sure that we do all that we can collectively as a community to make sure that this wave of violence ends. 
So it is up to us, not just at this moment remembering, but after this moment working to make full and creative use of the time that God has given us because time is a gift and we ought to redeem the time. We ought to make the most of the time. We ought to seize every moment. Our prayer here for from Base Memorial to all who have been victimized by violence is that in the midst of your pain, as your heart aches and sometimes the pain is so acute that it feels like it will never go away, our prayer for you is that God will wrap his arms around your hurting heart and hug until he hugs all the hurt away. After this, it is our time to work together to make our community better. Never underestimate as I take my seat the power, possibilities, and potential in each moment that we live. It is our responsibility to be good stewards of our time. And so when it comes to this issue, together, if we use our time right, we can make a difference. The poet said, I only have a minute, only 60 seconds in it, forced upon me, can't refuse it, didn't seek it, didn't choose it, but it's up to me to use it. I must suffer if I lose it, give account if I abuse it. Just a tiny little minute, but eternity is in it. God bless you. Jaquan Slaughter Jr. Martel Hall Jr. Teresa Thomas. Dennis Hall. Judy Deanna Hurst Eckert. Thomas Elliott. Joshua Barrett, Juliana Farmer, James Tut Jr., Siobhan Moore, Ernest Reed, Jadon Anderson, Darian Haley. Jamal Malone, Elijah Wade, DeAsia Goodman, David Huff, G Giovanni Rodriguez. Miguel Ricardo, Carl Hertzlog, Braxton Tucker, Nicholas Lyon, Negan Clifford Mills, Brandon Krask, Kieran Davis, Christopher Mays, Crystal Floats. Good evening, everyone. I'm Matt Golden with the Jewish Federation of Louisville. Um, I want to start by thanking Pastor Horton for all the work that he does, our mayor. Uh, but I especially want to thank tonight the Office of Safe and Healthy Neighborhoods, who is doing the most essential work that our community can do. And especially Javon Brown, who partners with us and our youth in the Jewish Federation of Louisville today. Uh, for a brief period of my life, Ocean was essential. I want to touch on something that Pastor Williams said tonight about memory and the importance of memory. 
I'm here with you to remember the 150 people that died in our midst, in our community. My people have a saying about those that died, Zikrinom la bracha, and it comes from Proverbs, and it means that our loved one's memory should be a blessing to us. The lives they lived, the loves that they had, and the people whose lives they brought meaning, their memory should be a gift. But may their memory be a blessing is more than that. It's more than just the thoughts of loved ones to sustain us through our grief. We believe the gift of memory is a reference to the continued blessing of and from the deceased herself. The future blessing that the whole world will derive, the positive outcome of which continues to inure to us the collected legacy of their deaths. So in the Bible, when we are commanded to remember, it always comes with the command to take action. We remember the Sabbath and we keep it holy. We remember the time in slavery so we don't enslave others. Remembrance is not passive. It is not inward. Remembrance is a blessing that requires that we write the people that we lost in our hearts and we do something. We must act. So the act of remembering the lives that we have lost compels us to take action. The blessing comes with what we do with the memory of their lives. But I'll tell you in the context of violence, it doesn't feel like a blessing, does it? A woman named Rachel Strommel wrote, the customary words ring out of place to us. There's nothing blessed about the way these lives were ripped from us. Their memorial calls for identifying and confronting the deep-seated conditions that gave rise to their murders, deliberately dismantling them, and then generating active justice. So Stromel did something that doesn't happen very often in Judaism. She changed the words. She said, Yehi zikrach mapecha, may her memory be a revolution. She said, for memory to mean anything, it must be active and it must be revolutionary. So I am so sorry that the loss in this room is palpable. I'm so sorry for your all's loss and those that we hold dear to us. But I'll say again, may the memory of those that we lost be a blessing. May the memory of those that we lost be a revolution. Thank you. Jackie Woodard, Keontae Ramsey, Samantha Thompson, Dwayne Martin, Marcus Reed, Nathaniel. Webster, Jacory Harris Jr., Eric Toyishime, Lawrence Lauf Jr., Julius. Coleman Jr. Neil Nye Tyron Bowling Vixen Gray Nicholas Feather Javon Bailey, Jason Stormbringer, Deontay Alexander,
Antoine Shackleford. James Brown Jr. Michael Leach. Damian Taylor. Monte Cobbs, Antoine Brown, Caleb Bruce, Dikea Morrill, Rayshon Holloway. Troy Young Jr. Jermaine Bishop. John Robinson. Latia Greenwell. And lastly, Roderick. McKissie. Good evening. I also greet all of our honored leaders and guests and all of you here this evening. I'm Ann Walter and this is Geshe Kelsang Robgill. We're from, as you can see, Draipong Gomong Center for Engaging Compassion. And in 2016, we started a little project called Louisville's Arms of Compassion because we felt the loss in our community. And we started this almost weekly gathering to remember by name those who had been killed and although we don't know most of those who have been murdered, we remember them every week. And in 2023, we met 44 times. We remember by name and we recommit to nonviolence. So we, we have been on Zoom since COVID and you are all invited to join us. I'd be happy to share the Zoom link or to remind you each week. And not only do we remember by name, but we also recommit to nonviolence. We take a pledge of nonviolence. And so step by step, we're transforming our own hearts and step by step, we believe we're transforming the community. So thank you and Geshe Rabi. <clears throat> Thank you. It is so honor to be with you all in this important moment. And I mentioned uh, my community, we have a lot of experience how it's important to remember each the people we lost in our city and we get it every week. And for me, it's the monk, his commitment to non-harming entire life and also to benefiting others through the practice. It's so meaningful to remember them just even we find names and read and think about their family and community children, wife, husband. And so that's why I'm here to knit. And then I will be just say a few words, just prayer, appreciation for compassion and awakening mind, which is my daily practice. <clears throat> Sajjo-sem-chot-rambo-che-mar-che-pal-na-la-che-jur 
เจวานยามาเมปะยังกุเนกุตันเทวะชัญชาสิมจอรมบุญเจมาเจปานามาเจเจเจวานยามาเมปะยังกุเนกุตันเทวะชัญชาสิมจอรมบุญเจมาเจ
and I serve the people in the area of Portland. And they, when I activated my phone, when I landed, there was a shooting in Portland and a loss of life. And <clears throat> to be honest with you, 11 o'clock news, watching the first five minutes, I am very nervous, not only of a gun violence, but also from people of Portland who I have really developed a love and connection with. <clears throat> the, the, from a Baha'i point of view, we all were created to be noble. Nobility is as, as our, is our birthright, but it's up to us and, of course, the environment. We grow up to how much of this nobility we can preserve and flourish. I like to expand our vision even beyond gun violence. Let's assume if we completely dealt with gun violence. To me, there are people who are slowly dying of other forms of violence and abuse. And really, <laughs> we need to deal with root causes of violence. If we uh, study the root causes of violence, among them are influence of peers on the person, having lack of attention or respect, having low self-worth or self-esteem, experiencing abuse and neglect in previous years, witnessing violence at home, community, or media. Isolation and aloneness, and then access to weapon. So access to weapon, even if you eliminate it, there are others that we need to really be mindful of. <clears throat> Thanks to my dear friend, Judd Hendricks, a few months ago, he uh, send an email to the members of board of directors of uh, Interfaith Path to Peace. And I really love that. This is a report by Surgeon General about the pandemic of loneliness and isolation. We have a serious health problem in this country. And it opens with this phrase, our relationship and interactions with family, friends, colleagues and neighbors are just some of what create social connection. Our connection with others and our community is also informed by our neighborhood, digital environment, schools and workplace. Social connection the structure, function, and quality of our relationship with others is critical and unappreciated contributor to individual and population health, community safety, resilience, and prosperity. However, far too many Americans lack social connection in one or more ways comprising these benefits, I'm sorry, compromising these benefits and leading to poor health and other negative outcomes. Uh, one of the statements in the Baha'i writings is every child is the light of the world and at the same time, it's darkness. I don't know if you remember <clears throat> the story of the painting on Sistine Chapel. When uh, the painter 
wanted to paint the face of Jesus Christ. Uh, he asked for a lot of children to be brought forward and one of the faces looked so beautiful, so innocent that he chose to uh, be inspired by that face so he can uh, paint the face of Lord Jesus Christ. And it took years for his painting to take, uh, took a long time. And this time he needed to paint the face of Judah, Eskariot. And he asked to be, uh, to go to the prison, look at the criminals' faces and see which one looks more like Judah. And he picked one, picked one and brought him to the Sistine Chapel. And the young man said, a few years ago, you brought me here and painted my face. In the Baha'i community of Louisville, we are engaged in society building and we have active programs for children and junior youth and youth empowerment. And we would love to if anyone else would like to lend a hand and we can work together to really pay more attention to our junior members of the community so we can prevent not only gun violence, but any form of violence and otherness. Thank you. Naoric Curry, Tran Jackson Jr., Bernard Cochran, John Poteet Jr., Joshua Davidson, Mikkel Coleman. Christopher Salmon, Ricky Kemp, Sean Gray, Martha Perez Silva, Zante Holbrook, Jeremy Floyd, Therese Curtin, Braasia Walker, Antoine Wallace, Jeron Miles, Travon Low. Good evening. I'm Reverend Anthony Chandler. I'm the rector of the Catholic Cathedral of the Assumption on Fifth Street. What an honor to be here with you this evening, and um, I'm taking the place, I guess there's no way to really do that, but I'm taking the place of Archbishop Fobb, who is not able to be here. He has to be in Tennessee this evening. First, I want to extend to all of the families, on behalf of our entire archdiocese, our deepest sympathies. And certainly, as I hear these names, I've only been back in Louisville now since July, but like Dr. Cyrus, I don't like listening to the news. And I hear those names and we pray and we pray for you 
We pray for healing and all that you need. But also, having been called, and I know that a number of my brothers and sisters in the ministry, we've been called to that university hospital. And we've gone and we have tried to make sense of whatever has happened and we pray with you and we try to walk with you. So in a special way, I pray for my brothers and sisters in the ministry who are called to reach out to our brothers and sisters who are hurting. As I look out though, I, I know there's one word that is very important to me and I think it is to you and that's the word of hope. Each of us lives in the expectation of our city being better. Each of us lives in the expectation of a greater respect for life. Each of us lives in the expectation of times past when it wasn't 150 names. It's overwhelming to think Japan has 10 names out of a millions and millions of people. Tonight we pray for the change of hearts that people come to understand and respect one another for who we are, for what we are. We are created in the image and likeness of something a lot bigger than we are. And we celebrate life. And so tonight, as we gather, I think it's a beautiful gathering. I, I know that this was held at the cathedral some years ago and I pray that one day it will return to us. We'd be happy to host because it is us working together, coming together, praying together, serving together. But also there's a bit of challenge in what we need to do, that we challenge others. I was watching uh, the other night, there was a particular neighborhood and there were three ladies who said, we're going to take our neighborhood back. Go for it. Take it back. For our parents, parenting. Be strong, teachers. But know that we are praying every day. I now live on South Fifth Street. I'm praying a lot. And just the other night, I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, my TV room is filled with blue light. Just around the corner, by Metro Corrections, there had been a shooting. I went out. And again, saddened. But I still am hope-filled that it's going to be better. God bless you. David Moore. Terrence Mason, Keontae Minor, Kobe Banks Sr., Terrence Betham, Ramel Atkins. Darnell Ockley, Gary Henry Jr., Connell Pate, Treshawn Franklin Garrett. Victor Anderson Sr. Austin Walters. Don Acta Rodriguez Hernandez. Craig Banks. Shakia Mitchell D. 
Deanna Hay Gray. I'm sorry, Deanna Hall Gray, I'm sorry. David English. Good evening. My name is Reverend Bruce Beisner and I serve as the minister of All Peoples Unitarian Universalist Congregation on Brownsboro Road. It is truly an honor and a blessing to be here with you tonight as we remember so many beautiful people together. One of the foundations of my Unitarian Universalist faith is a steadfast affirmation of the inherent worth and dignity of every person. My religion insists that every life is precious. Every person's story needs to be heard and that no one is ever unworthy of our respect and our compassion. Now in my congregation, we are a pretty diverse bunch and we do not promote specific theological ideas about a lot of things. But I think what we hold in common within our religious community and I think what we share with all of you here tonight is the pain and the grief that we feel when those we cherish have been taken from us. When violence ends the life of a friend. When despair rips apart the future and we are left to try to go on shrouded in loss. I am very pleased that my congregation is dedicated to doing what we can to promote awareness and safety and better laws. This past year, our All Peoples UU congregation has partnered with Moms Demand Action to purchase over 400 gun locks as just a small way to help prevent deaths in our community. But what I believe is every little bit helps. In the spirit of this night of remembrance, I offer you a prayer written by Unitarian Universalist author and activist Leslie Takahashi. In the daily weave of our lives, those who have died are still strong, guiding threads. Theirs is the golden glimmer or perhaps the brilliant red or the melancholy blue. Still, they are a part of the whole fabric of our lives. Through them, we know immortality. In the hour to hour rush of our daily tasks, they still travel with us. Through something they taught us, which is now ours to do, through something they loved, which is now ours to carry out, through something we shared, which is now ours alone, and yet not. Through them, we know immortality. In the minute-to-minute grasp of where we are, We remember the joy they gave us, which opened us up to hope. The sorrows that we knew together, which taught us strength. The life shared, which is now ours to steward. Through them, we know immortality. In the second-to-second pulse of life, We sense the spirit of those that we have loved and lost. The presence can be too shy for naming, too amorphous for full knowing, and yet it remains. 
It remains as real as the days that we shared. Through them, we know immortality. They are more than remembered. They are memory itself. For what we love lives on in the way they accompany us through our life. Their words and wisdom are our guide. Their humor, our relief. Their restless concern for the world, our charge. Through them, we know immortality. May each and every name uttered tonight, may each person that we mourn renew in us that most sacred of all callings, that calling to respect and protect one another, to heal those that are hurting and have been harmed, and to take action, even small action, to end those cycles of violence that threaten so many among us every day. In the name of all that is holy, in the name of everyone being holy, we pray. Amen. Thank you. Giovanni Rodriguez, Miguel Ricardo, Carl Hertzlock, Braxton Tucker, Nicholas Lyon, Negan Clifford Means, Brandon Krask, Kieran Davis, Christopher Mays, Crystal Fultz, Donovan Reese, Arian Hickman, Keith Smith, Paul Pint Pintney, Amy Skelton, Quinn Dunlap, Deshaun O'Neill. Praise the Lord, everybody. My name is Alvina Tunstill Smith, and I'm pastor of True Believers in Christ. And I want to share with you that I too am a victim of gun violence. My mother, Jean Tunstill, attended this church, and my father was a pastor for over 30 years. My brother, Michael, was killed. He was shot in the head and left in the alley. And my parents began to blame one another. My mother would say, it's your fault, Alvin. You should have taken him with you when you went out of town. And my dad would say, no, Gene, it's your fault. You babied him up too much. You should have got on him more. And they continue to blame one another. And I just stopped by, I, I want you to know that don't waste your time blaming one another. Don't tear yourself down on what you could have done and you should have done. Take this time. God has given you other children. And whatever it is that you feel like you should have done and could have done and didn't do, pour it into those other children. Help them get right. That's what we need to do. Don't keep blaming nobody. Don't even blame the one that took your loved one. 
We got to learn how to forgive and pray for them. And that's not easy. Because my little great-grandson was killed at the hand of his own father. 33 days old. His dad was playing a video game and got angry. And you know what he did when he got angry? He slammed that child down on a concrete floor. And that child died. And Briasia, little Briasia, right here in this paper, saw her grow up. And the parents are tearing one another apart with, it's your fault. It's your fault. I come to ask you, take the time that you have and pour Christ into your loved ones. It don't have to just be your children and your grandchildren. Whoever's around you, pour some love in. Amen. Antoine Shackelford, James Brown Jr., Michael Leach, Damian Taylor, Demonte Cobbs, Antoine Brame, Caleb Bruce. Dakia Morell, Rayshawn Holloway, Troy Young Jr., Jermaine Bishop, John Robinson, Latia Greenwell, and Roderick McKissie. This is a uh, very bittersweet time um, as I come to you all and speak. I am a victim of gun violence. I'm a mother. My son, 23-year-old son, was killed at his home this year, July the 26th. So I need you all to help me to get through this right now. Me and my husband were celebrating our 10 year anniversary. We had just went to Cancun and we had just got off the flight. We had enough time to get something to eat and we were there for 10 hours on July the 25th. Three o'clock that morning, I got a call, several calls that woke me up. We wasn't even there 10 hours. And the call came from my bonus daughter, screaming through the phone. And the reception was going in and out. And I'm just trying to help you all to understand what was going on at this time when I got the call that my 23-year-old son had been brutally killed at his home. Paramedics were there. They arrived. They did everything they could possibly do. 
the last point of information I got was that the coroner was there. And they said, ma'am, I'm in Cancun. I'm in Cancun, you all. My family's there. Friends are there. I'm not there. In the corner. Pronounce him. Dead on arrival. I'm in Cancun, you all. I'm on the floor in Cancun by now. I'm on the floor, stretched out, prostrate. And I'm used to being prostrate because that's how I pray. I didn't have a piece of breath in my body to try to pray at this time. I was crying out. I was hurt. I was confused. I was lost. And I couldn't understand this is happening to my son and we're miles away from him. Who is gonna be there with my oldest son, my 20 year, 27 year old son, to console him? But I thank God that my family came, they, they traveled, they were there. They were there from E-Town, Red Cliff, Simpsonville, West End, uh, Prospect, where, where all my family were, they were there. And as I was coming home, Delta uh, Airlines made it so possible, I don't know how I got home, but I got home in a matter of time. Delta Airlines did some amazing, I don't know what they did, but how they did it, um, but we got there in a matter of time. And I'm sending all this to you all, and to the mothers, and to the family members who are here I feel your pain. Your pain is my pain. And I know what you're going through. I know what you went through. And I know what you're going through right now. Every time you cry, I'm crying. Every time you're angry and upset, I'm angry and upset. And the times that you're praying, I'm praying and praying even more. And then I'm fighting for mothers and families and anyone who's lost, gun gun, lost a loved one to gun violence. And I'm going to fight the way I'm choosing to fight. I'm up here for another reason. I'm up here because I think one of the things that get lost in the shuffle of this is suicide. Suicide. We've had 112, that's not counting the 150 homicides. We've had 112 suicides and I don't, I stand for them. I don't want that to get lost in the shuffle. My personal experience is that we were kids growing up in Washington, D.C. Our grandparents lived in a little town called Covington, Virginia. And every summer, all of us kids would come down from D.C. to Virginia to play and to hang out with our grandparents. And uh, my grandmother raised us like sons and daughters. She didn't raise us like first cousins and second cousins. And one of my cousins, he had a six-figure job, beautiful wife, two beautiful children. And the thing that gets me is, is that you don't see and you don't know. You can't see the signs. That's why it's important to pay close attention to when you see things your children or, or your loved one doing that's not you, that you used to seeing them do. No signs of it. He had no, uh, where well, you could see it. But he took and got off from work. 
and he went and got some, I don't know what kind of stuff you call it, but he had a plastic bag and he took the stuff and sprayed it in the plastic bag, put it over his head and went to sleep. And I saw the devastation. He didn't wake up. I saw the devastation that it took upon my grandmother and grandfather. Uh, my grandfather and grandmother, as one of the, the lady was up here from Bates, were blaming one another, even though they had mother and father and blamed them. You should have saw the signs. You don't see the signs. And so I really want us to pay attention that just don't allow that to get lost in the shuffle because people are taking their lives each and every day the number one cause of homicides is suicide nationally it's the number one killer we don't want that to get lost in the shuffle so I stand today as I get ready to light this candle that he gave me the light to put in the middle for the victims of suicide. And you may know someone that you knew that took their own life. Pay attention, watch. And you see signs where it looks like it's not normal. You don't know because you may come home or you may hear where someone took their own life because they couldn't cope with life. So to get to our destination, we got to change our situation. So I ask right now for a moment of silence, if you will, please. Just to think about what took place tonight. Just remember, just remember, people are taking their life as well as lives are being taken. And I realize one of the things that the devil can't do, he can't take a life. So he convinced people to take their own life. Thank you. Lincoln Bridge. Hello, everyone. Hello. We're Lincoln Bridge. It's an honor to be here, first of all. You know, thank all of you, Pastor Bruce, um, and everybody in attendance, everybody who came and uh, gave their hearts and, 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 and spoke and, and, and made, this, made this possible. Uh, you know, my hat off to, to everybody. Uh, I hope our prayers go out to all the families and all the loved ones. Uh, Let's create change, all right? The community starts with us, so let's create change, all right? Broken down and tired Living life on a merry-go-round But you can't find that fighter But I see it in you, so we gonna work it out And mountain
Let's give him another great big God bless you. We truly give thanks tonight for all of you that came out. And uh, we sure do want to thank Pastor Dr. Bruce Williams for allowing this to take place. Come on and give him a great big God bless you. We want to thank Joseph of Ocean and all of the volunteers and all of those who uh, lit candles and all the organizations represented. And we also want to thank Paul Callahan, who is the director, stand up Paul, who is the director of OSHA. Thank you, who really puts his heart into this, who really want to see the community become a safe place. Thank God for the LMPD police chief. We thank you, deputy chief. We thank you for coming tonight. God bless you. Stay safe.